Hey everybody, my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and I just want to talk to you about why I think the Libertarian Party is an important vehicle in the fight for liberty. A lot of people, you know, they like to uh, sometimes just dismiss the Libertarian Party and say we should run Republican or we shouldn't be involved in politics at all. And there are many avenues to promoting the liberty message. The liberty movement isn't just the Libertarian Party. There's much more and it doesn't, so I'm not saying that there's only one path. I'm just saying this is one path and it's part of the many paths being involved in the Libertarian Party and I think it's a very important one. So when it comes to the two major parties, the way, the way I look at things is that the Libertarian message is a message that generally appeals to people who are not in power. Because our message is that of dismantling power. Our message is that no, there should be no big giant collection of power. There should be this you know, massive authority to be able to use force against others. So we generally don't appeal to those who are in power because they're like, you want us to give up our power? No. So yes, we had a huge sort of libertarian swing after Obama won in 2008. While there was a lot of uh, younger people and sort of libertarian remnant who supported Ron Paul in 2007, like myself, it wasn't until after Obama had won that a lot of people started really more, in a more faster growing sense, started looking into libertarian ideas within the Republican Party. The reason is, they were now the party out of power. So suddenly the idea of dismantling the power that the Democrats had became a lot more appealing. So there was this sort of window of opportunity for libertarians within the Republican Party, and you had Justin Amash, you had Thomas Matthew, you had Rand Paul, you had Eric Brakey, um, and that window existed. But with Donald Trump winning, that window has closed. I do think there's going to be room for people like Rand Paul, Massey, Amash, and Brakey to continue moving forward within the Republican Party, but far as sort of new libertarians winning within the Republican Party, um, I don't foresee that being the case. The reason being is, with Donald Trump winning, it does two things. One, it puts the Republicans in power. So that libertarian message is now going to be antithetical, because why would they want to give up the power that they have? And we've already kind of seen this in practice. And two, Donald Trump showed that you can win with a right-wing populist message, not a libertarian message. So there was this, again, that during that window of time, people were starting to embrace libertarian ideas because they were thinking, well, our traditional sort of neo conish message wasn't working, we lost in 2008, so we need to find some new message in order to, to win elections. And it seemed like a libertarian message, or at least a more libertarian message, might, might be that solution. But then Donald Trump comes in and grabs sort of the, sort of the more populist policies on, of the neocons and the libertarians and mixes them up into this one sort of uber populist uh, message, um, borderline authoritarian, and uh, wins. And that signals to the rest of the parties that that's, that's how you win. And that shuts sort of libertarians out of the conversation within the Republican Party. Again, does that mean there's not going to be a libertarian strain within the Republican Party? Not necessarily. But my prediction is that we're going to, you're going to start seeing a lot more appeal of libertarians to, to Democrats who are concerned about now Republican power, um, kind of like we saw Republicans appealing to libertarians during the time Obama was in president. Um, again, it just makes sense that the party out of power is going to suddenly like the ideas about dismantling the power that the party they don't like has. But that's going to constantly be this pendulum swinging back and forth. Okay, so if anything, technically, there's a window of opportunity right now for libertarians to be elected as Democrats uh, over the next four years, sort of maybe more left-leaning uh, libertarians. But the Libertarian Party is the one place where you can just be libertarian. You don't have to worry about uh, changing your tone to a more right-wing leaning tone or a more left-wing leaning tone. You can just be libertarian. Now, there's a lot of work to do as far as building out infrastructure, uh, you know, mailing lists, lists of donors, building relationships with donors, relationships with the media. It's a process. And again, we're also, now that there's much more attention to the party, is just, you know, sitting there and uh, keep keeping that in mind and, and making sure we put our best face forward and a message that touches people's hearts and their minds. These are all things that we have to work on within the Libertarian Party, but that vehicle is still there and it's still growing. I mean, um, I know talking to Larry Sharp, he's talking about how he's seeing record uh, turnouts at one convention after the next. And that's amazing. The growth is there. The potential is there. And 
we just have to realize that this is a, this is a process. It's going to take some time to grow this because when you run for office as a libertarian, it's not just about winning. It's about doing as good as you can because a higher than normal vote total will get you more credibility with donors, get you more credibility with the media because they're like, oh, they did better than expected. So then donors are now paying attention. Media is now paying attention. The community is now paying attention. And that opens the door for to do even better next time, maybe even win in the next election. So it's really just about continuously running candidates, especially for those local city council races that are very winnable, and, and building and continuously building that credibility. You don't just suddenly have, you know, multi-million dollar donors and wall-to-wall -wall media coverage overnight. There's a process of building that credibility that we're still in the very early stages of, but we had a nice shot in the arm in 2016. And there's going to be a time, and we're already starting to see this, where the Democrats and the Republicans are getting to the point where their establishment entrenchment is so thick that they're just becoming, people are really looking for that third opportunity. So, the, And right now, the Libertarian Party is that biggest life raft. And if we develop that life raft, we can develop a life raft where people who are just sick and tired of the two-party system can jump onto and learn about libertarian ideas. They may not necessarily be as libertarian as you'd like when they first join, but if we keep an open heart and, and, and aim to sort of cooperate with people and educate people in, in a welcoming and warm way, we'll, people will become more gradually more libertarian as they become involved. But if we approach every new person sort of with hostility and, 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 and resentment because they're not as libertarian as we are right now, regardless of whether you're Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian, you're going to scare people away. Okay, and you're gonna push people away and, and, and lose an opportunity. But the opportunity with the Libertarian Party exists and will exist. And I think it's a life raft. Again, it's a longer term play. So yeah, I can see a uh, strategy in the sense using the infrastructure of the Democrats and the Republicans in the short run to win a winnable election here and there. But again, the Republican and Democrats will never be a Libertarian Party. That's just not gonna happen. Um, there, there's too much establishment entrenchment in the institutions, in their relationships with donors, in their relationships with the media, that you can't completely change, that won't ever change enough for it to be a purely libertarian party. You can build relationships with the media, relationships with donors, that are based on a libertarian message within the libertarian party. It's gonna take longer, it's a longer play, but it's worthwhile so that way you can have a, a strong libertarian message at the table going forward. But again, we got to make sure that, that that message is tempered to appealing to people's hearts and their minds and appealing to the challenges that people experience in their day-to-day -day problems. Um, so again, we're good at making the argument of the mind and listening to people like Larry, you learn how to make the message to the heart and again to their everyday experience. So we can move in that direction, we can grow this. And right now we're going through growing pains, of course, but growing pains, if people just walked away every time there was a, a sign of some, of, of some challenge, nothing would ever get done. So if you don't like what you see in any portion of the organization, the best way to do it is change it. And again, as Larry says, if you just leave, nothing changes because you've just given up your, 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 F, your, your seat at the table to actually change things. And if, yeah, you can go walk back to either Democrat or Republican Party where basically you are dealing with, again, large, long-time entrenched ideas that are, that, yeah, sure, you have some nice built-up infrastructure, but it's going to require a lot of compromise. And over time, that's going to become, it's going to fall apart. Um, it's bec they're going through that sort of that stage of calcification and, and rust. So this is my thoughts on the subject. And again, there's still a path, and there's still, I, I think, a, a huge part of the liberty, the liberty movement is outside of politics, in investing in technology and entrepreneurship to create businesses, charities, and community organizations that help solve people's challenges outside of government. But it's still important to be politically involved to prevent things from getting worse at the government level, and also to make sure that people are free enough to be able to make those solutions outside of government. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Have a great day and enjoy.